Hello and welcome back to Citizen Sleeper. I feel like we're in the post game a little bit, but that's fine. We have uh, we have some stories that we can wrap up and I would like to do so. Uh, I'm also occasionally, um, well, I don't know if I wanna use the six here. Do I wanna use that six there? I guess there's no, not really a reason why not. In fact, we can progress this completely. I'm not sure what spoke climber does. I'm honestly just like uh, just to figure out, you know, out of curiosity, I want to I want to see what what certain things lead to. Ascender car. Take the ascender car to the eye's central hub. Oh, this is a completely different area. The hub, station main dock. Wow. Um, we've got an interface thing here. The stacked bays house a flow of incoming and outgoing ships. The digital manifests will help you get your head around this place. So we could definitely do something here. Um, space socializing. Oh, let's just spend a three here. It'll become a five. Pro positive outcome. All right, well, well, we'll leave it at that for now. We also have something over here. Oh, killer. The cloud. A glint like a light traveling along the edge of a wave fills your eyes. Then the blade follows, a long head with two dead sockets, slipping towards you in silence. You freeze, hoping it will pass you by, hoping that it will not simply slice through the s slice through you like air. The blade head nears, slides past you almost. It nicks you, grazes you. You are desperate to cry out, to call out. But you hold, you hold your silence and simply watch the blind eyes of the killer glide past, empty of all thought. Then the blade winks into the dark and you are alone again. Now you cry out. Eek. So hunter, hunter on the ring, but in the hub we have the killer. And if we make progress on the, the killer, they, they might actually kill us dead. So this is worth noting. I don't know what we could possibly gain from these, but I guess that's part of what makes it compelling, isn't it? So why don't we spend a one and see what we can gain. An encrypted key. Are you kidding me with these encrypted keys? Why? Oh, we can scroll this around too. That's really cool. Gimbal Lounge. Buy a spacer meal. Sells itself on its spinning sphere, which claims to produce therapeutic gravitational effects. It doesn't, but they sell food. <laughs> Cute. And then Descender Car. Well, that's cool. Completely new area I've never seen before. And then we have Paz Import Export. Oh, heck, we can sell a ship mined. For a hundred and fifty. And then we can export Matsutake. Okay, yeah. Paz claims this ship mined was salvaged uh, was salvaged from a Solheim executive yacht, which is why it costs so much. Three hundred, huh? I mean we could sell two ship mines and pay and buy a, this ship mined. What for what reason? I still don't know. So I, I would prefer not to do that until I understand better what it is I'm buying. And, you know, I mean, I, here's the thing, like, sure, you know what, whatever, let's do it. Why? Because we can very easily replace our ship mind. Like, that's not a problem at all. Um, it really isn't. In fact, like, we could have replaced it pretty easily. Um, so, yeah, we'll go ahead and throw enough, a bunch of that, and then buy this ship mine core here. And now we have... Wait, is it the same? Did I just like completely waste my money? I just like so. It's just a. It's just a ship mine core. Oh, that makes you her favorite customer. So it was just a ship mine core. Oh my god. All right. Well, someone out there is gonna be very annoyed that I did that, but uh, I think you might understand why I did that because it the way it phrased it, it was like this is the special one. No, it's, a, it's just a ship mine. 
absolutely no reason to to buy it at all if you already have two <laughs> uh, all right well anyway let's go to our empty container and uh sleep we're gonna be at three actions uh on the next cycle which kind of sucks i really wish I, could, I had more reliable ways of getting scrap Ooh, Lem and Mina. Here we go. The crowds have already gathered by the time you get to the shipyard, and you recognize faces among them. People you have worked alongside on the side reel. <clears throat> the intervening cycles have turned their excitement into anxiety, and few of them smile at you. Instead, the nervous system... Sorry, the nervous energy of the crowd fills the space, creating a feedback loop of growing tension. You pick out Lem and Mina and work your way over to them, pushing through the crowd. He silently raises his eyebrows at you. His anxiety obvious, but Mina flashes you a huge smile, unaware of the tension. Robot, she shouts, reaching out to you. Hi, Mina. Here, uh, we'll give her a hug. She gratefully accepts your hug, leaning against your chest, and Lem smiles, seemingly great, glad to share the weight of Mina for a moment. Quite the turnout, huh? Lem glances around, pulling Mina close. I don't think patience is one of this crowd's strengths. The sound of an argument towards the back catches Yor and Lem's attention. He is putting it lightly. This place seems set to explode. This isn't good. Lem doesn't dare answer, but the look in his eyes suggests he agrees. This is Aster Enghart of the Celis Foundation. The announcement echoes from the speakers at the shipyard entrance, and shouts of quiet rapidly follow. I'm sorry I can't be there to meet you all, and thank you on behalf of Sendra Celis. For the work you have done on the side reel horizon. Most of the crowd strains to see Aster's face, but the small display shows only a ghostly white figure, smudged and unclear. Sendra wanted me to pass on her personal thanks for your commitment to and belief in the Celis Foundation's mission. We chose the eye for this project because we knew that we would find like-minded individuals here, especially among the ranks of the Venerable Havenage Association. Unlike most of the Corps, we believe uh, we neither believe Erlen's eye to be a threat or a rogue state, but instead an embryo of the foundation of a new decentralized social structure, one where each citizen might be the master of their own destiny. A ripple of impatience <laughs> runs through the crowd. They didn't come here for a sermon. You are all pioneers, just like the, those core citizens who the side reel of Horizon will carry in the cryosleep to the planet that will become the foundation's first frontier world, Celis One. At the mention of the destination world, excited conversations break out among the workers. This is too real. This is actually, like, frustrating. Because it's like, yeah, this is exactly how this would go down. It's like, yeah, we bought a planet. We bought a planet. Like, get out of here, dog. There, our citizens will be able to create their own innovative bottom-up economic order, aligned with the principles set down by Sendra Salas herself. Freedom, resilience, and self-sustenance. They just gotta pull themselves up by the bootstraps. This is all thanks to your tireless efforts in the Havenage Yards. As a reward for those efforts, you may know that we are offering a select group the opportunity, uh, a, offering a select group the opportunity to join the caretakers of this vision, the staff of the Side Reel Horizon, who will maintain the vessel during its multi-decade transit through interstellar space. Lem turns to you, his eyes bright. This is it. This draw has been performed at random by the central AIs of the Foundation and is final and binding. Please note, only licensed contractors of the Foundation are eligible for this draw. I know you have all been eagerly awaiting this day, and without fur further delay, I will now read the Celis identification numbers of those chosen for this great honor. A murmur runs through the crowd. Celis identification numbers? Licensed contractors? You have never even heard the term mentioned. Is this something you were supposed to be assigned? You glance at Lem, but his eyes are fixed forward, wide and shimmering. All around you, people are speaking in hushed tones like a rising wave. Aster stares, uh, starts reading out sequences of numbers and letters, and panic begins to set in. No one seems to know what is happening. Somewhere near the front of the crowd, someone shouts in celebration, and everyone pushes forward. P uh, Lem? You turn to see Lem still staring forward. Mina is scared now as the shouts start. Daddy? Someone throws something at the entrance, and it rattles against the shipyard doors. 
You see for the first time Havenage security stood on either side, scared, arguing between themselves. You feel the anger rising in the crowd. Uh, Lem, let's go. He doesn't move. I'm just, they might call out names, I can't. Mina tugs at his dog tags. It's not happening. Lem blinks rapidly and then turns to you. He opens and closes his mouth and looks down at the Mina. He sees the fear in her eyes and understands it's time to go. You, and, you lead Lem and Mina out, shoving people aside. As you do, you hear the sound of a shuff, uh, scuffles emerging at the front of the crowd, of metal canisters bouncing off the shipyard walls. You keep your head down and walk away, the sound of Aster reading off the ciphers echoing above the chaos like some strange manta, mantra. When you turn to Lem, there are tear tracks running down his cheeks, and Mina is sniffling into his jacket. You feel the sadness rising in you too. They screwed you. They screwed all of you. You were never even on the list. The feeling is as unpleasant as it is familiar. This is not how I thought it was going to go, to be honest. You stare ahead into the tunnel as the security sirens sound out, a signal for the coming violence. What do you mean drive failed? I had absolutely no, no way to change that, as I understand it. Was I supposed to change that? Um... Hmm, give me a second here. In Ethan's protection, win a side reel ticket. The draw didn't go your way. In fact, you never had a chance. I guess it it's just a scripted fail. Lem and Mina's unit. There's a note on the door of the unit. Sleeper gone to find work. Lem. Well... That is depressing, is it not? Um, let's grab some food. It's just like real life. Yep, another day. That's depressing. Let's grab some food. Just another day on Twitter. Yep, that's depressing. Let's grab some food. You're welcome for that. Um, harvest mushrooms. We don't need to... Wait, what? What? What happened to our aviary? Girls are easy to find, but Miss Matsutake and other stranger types will require extra effort. Take your pick. Okay, I guess we're harvesting our mushrooms. Our mushrooms have grown. That's what this means. We got, um, two Matsutake. That's good. Uh, we got one club head caps. Okay, we still have yet to get our gear roll caps. My goodness, that is a difficult mission to progress on. We got an upgrade point though, we, which means we have three, and that means we can have uh, plus two on engineering. Not really any good reason to do that, but I want to. I think it it um, makes sense for our character. Sometimes you have to do things that make sense for your role play and, and less so for optimization. Um, so now we can progress Haifa Labs. I don't know if we'll have enough here. Oh yeah, we, we we have just barely enough. We could also hand in some gear roll samples, but no, not doing that. Not doing that though. You can't, you, you'd have to pry those from my cold dead hands. Mariko meets you at the entrance of the, to the lab, leaning on her crutch with a glint in her eye. Walk with me, sleeper. I'd like to tell you a story. One second here. She makes her way down the corridor that leads back up towards the main commune building. 
When people first crossed what we f call the Founders Gap into the Greenway, they did so against the wishes of Andre Erlin. At the time, Erlin was trying to stabilize the Union and establish control over the Eye in the wake of Solheim's collapse. It was chaos. Competing factions, failing systems, so many dead and injured from the riots, that was his priority. Why? Erlin was interested in people, not plants. He was a pragmatist, and for good reason. You both crossed through a glass-roofed tunnel, the greenway outside crowded with vines and branches, dappling the light. Erlin had written the greenway off, cut off from the rest of the station and linked to a broken spoke. He claimed it was only a matter of time before everything here would die. He refused to let anyone abandon their duty to the Union and cross. They were traitors to the cause, or as good as. Rico continues, making her slow but steady way into the inner gardens of the commune. There weren't many of us, but we believed that was what was here was worth saving. We had to keep our plans secret until we crossed, and some of us left people behind. She pauses to catch her breath, her voice cracking. It is difficult to know it from effort or emotion. What we found was a disaster, nothing like what you see here. Half of the greenway was leaking oxygen into space, the plants fra flash frozen. The other half was a swamp of mulch, as decaying matter clogged every system. We worked hard, we lost good people, we cleaned up and closed up, but it was never going to be enough. After many, many cycles, we all knew this place was doomed, but we kept on working, talking less and less because we couldn't face it. We all developed a death wish. If the Greenway was going to die, so would we. But it didn't die. It did not, Rico smiled. We crossed some invisible boundary, tipped some biological scale, and the Greenway started to recover. Plants flowered, crops sprouted. For the first time, we reaped the fruits of our labor. Rico smiles, looking up at you. We thought it was us, that we managed to do just enough to end the cycle of de decay. I thought we had saved the Greenway until today. You pass into the grow beds of the commune, rich with the hustle and bustle of Haifa members planting and harvesting. For a while, Rico is quiet, and you both simply observe the hypnotic movements of the work crews. The eager chatter washed over you like a wave. Rico smiles to herself. I should have known, of course, that our arrogance was unfounded, but we needed to believe back then. We needed a myth to bring more people across the gap. You both move into a, cor a smaller corridor, Rico following some direction unknown to you. What you have shown me is that, back then, the Greenway saved us, not the other way around. Tell me, have you ever consumed one of the Matsutake or Giro cra caps that you have been growing? No. They can be difficult to prepare without proper equipment, she muses, but you should try them. After all, they were designed for you. Rico has a mischievous look. At first, I thought it was the location they were grown in that made the mushrooms from the aviary, from the labs, or from the grove different to each other. But what I have come to understand is that it is the person growing them. The Matsutake and Giro caps you, br uh, you brought me are totally unique, containing compounds never usually found in similar specimens in my possession. Many of these compounds aren't even digestible for humans, but for a sleeper like you, Rico smiles as she leads you into the internal garden of the commune, where the Haifa members have planted species from all over the Greenway. Back when the tide turned, when the Greenway started to recover, we all felt something. A response. It was as if this place was not just alive, as a forest is alive, but alive in other ways. Communicative. Responsive. We shrug shrugged it off at the time, but now I understand why. Rico stops and turns to you. This place is responding to us, adapting itself to us. It is growing fruiting bodies for you, for me. It is adapting, changing. It is, in short, displaying all the signs of sentience. The Greenway is sentient? Perhaps not the Greenway, but the ecosystem itself, or something within it. Rico sits on a bench, within the peaceful gardens, and gestures for you to join her. When you have been growing the Girols and the Matsutakes in the aviary, those species so familiar to the Greenway, have you discovered any others? Uh, yes. Rico can barely contain her excitement. I should like to see those. Please bring me some next time you are here. You look around the garden, amazed at the sense of peace within it. Rico interrupts the silence. There is a species of mushroom that I haven't seen in years. It is dark, short, shaped like a club. Oh, yeah? We first found it in those early days when we were wa working to save this place. 
It was around the time that we started to lose our first members. They were succumbing to some infection, some mold growing deep in the dark mulch that drowned this place. At that point we thought we were lost, and then these mushrooms emerged from that same black mold. We tested them and saw that they contained some compounds that contracted the mold. They contained an antidote. Of course, as a botanist, I saw this as part of the natural processes of the ecosystem. Even if the time scale seemed absurdly short, but what I am wondering is if that antidote was a, a gift. Rico meets your eyes. Perhaps if you are patient, you will receive your gift too, sleeper. You both sit for a while. Rico seemingly done telling stories for today. You watch the light playing off the leaves and plants around you and wonder what forces could be at play in this place. After a while, you stand and leave with a quiet nod to Rico, leaving her to her memories. Um, okay. So, aviary, yeah, we need, we can germinate some more spores. So I would like to do that. Honestly, incredible to me that we haven't gotten... A, we didn't get any Girol from that harvest. And, you know, the problem... Probably the reason is, is because I used only high checks to, to do that. And maybe the Matsutake was only from high checks, and then you get lower checks from... Or, uh, Girol from lower checks. That's my theory. Work assignment. Commune members are expected to turn up for work assignments and in return their needs will be met are all are treated equally can we do anything at Haifa Labs? club head samples so we can send her to right now hopefully we'll get more in our next batch so no matter no matter what happens in the next uh like harvest we will progress something there's actually quite a lot going on right now let's uh sleep we are starving i guess Um, this is going to be, the, the scrap ship is going to be back in one cycle. The side rail horizon is going to be leaving in two cycles. Um, Mina's unit, something is going to happen in two cycles. Not sure what, a little bit concerning. Um, hmm. I guess we could progress Rabaya, but I kind of want to see, is there not something else we can do up in the hub? Gimbal Lounge. There's nothing we can do here except buy food, right? The hub. We can do something here. Oh yeah, and there's interfacing. We could spend a two here. Oh, negative outcome. Okay, so we're starving now. Um, I don't know what I want to spend this six on, if I'm being honest. I'll tell you what I kind of want to do is I still want to complete the derelict ship, even if it doesn't really amount to much. And I do kind of want to progress stuff up here. So let's see what we can do here. We can't spend a one there. Oh, we can spend a six here. I know that's this probably feels like a waste. Is this if this is another encryption key? I swear to God, what is the point of all of these encryption keys? I'm gonna find out what they are, and it's gonna be like wholly disappointing. Okay, so we only have a one. You know what I should do is I should sell some of my data. Why not? I wish I could sell them in bulk. Just like sell all.
there's not really much reason to sell them explore the rotunda dock watcher there's still a lot more left to do it feels like we could we could have uh, like these are two things here i could have worked on for a while now and i kind of just chose not to um so what does rabia need engage these are risky i don't know let's just um i'm just gonna spend this one pip on uh getting some data all right let's sleep i'd like to squeeze at least one more cycle in uh in before we end the episode oh i was starving ah oh, stupid stupid dumb so we lost two condition so i'm gonna go ahead and use a stabilizer now and then we're gonna go get some food i uh i will say after a while i'm kind of done with seeing this loading bar for something like it, it's not loading anything like nothing is happening there it's it's just like kind of something that over time is going to eat up time um so i you know it's it's i don't know a little bit of a flavor uh, almost like a juice thing like you know it just kind of adds an aesthetic thing but i think over time i i kind of don't want to see it anymore <laughs> um wow we really don't have anything we can do right now so I guess I'm just going to go and hang out at the hub. You know what? Let's progress our... What, where is it? This thing, the rotunda. Why don't we... Exp why don't we uh, steal dock plans? Oh, that's interesting. Sure, let's steal dock plans. Why not? Neutral outcome. We are on the Havenage watch list. So I guess I may have ruined something here. Ankita, stranded mercenary. Hey, you want to earn a chit? Ankita stands beside a huge pile of tied together hull plates. She, she stretches out her back, her shoulders bulging beneath her uh, flight suit. Sure. You cross the docking concourse as she begins to split the plating into two bundles. What is it with this place? She asks as she lashes the massive plates together. Everyone wants their cut. She straightens up to an imposing height, her armor plates creaking, and looks up. Looks you up and down. Don't try anything, all right? She taps the butt of her sidearm. I don't want to have to put anyone else down today. Anyone else? She shrugs. What can I say? My temper's a little short lately. Ankita ho uh, hoists one bundle of plating onto her shoulder. Come on, then. Enough chat. You've got to earn that shit. You struggle to shoulder the plates, but you do eventually. And Kita gives you a look. Ships this way, and she sets off down a gantry at an impressive speed. As you catch up to her, she turns down a passage, pushing through a small crowd of uh, stevedores. Steve doors? Um, why are you doing this yourself? You mean, why aren't I hiring those good folk? She nods back at the stevedores. Steve doors? What are these? I've paid Havenage enough. They are currently uh, rinsing me for a mooring. I can't vacate unless I fix the amber ambergris. Or sell it off as scrap. Ambergris, is that your ship? You catch on fast. She gives you another of her looks. She rapidly turns another corner as you trail behind. She got cut up pretty bad on our last job, and I had to moor up here for a spell. But since then, it's only gotten worse. Someone got in and sliced the core from our ship mind. So now she's gone dark. She shifts the panels on her shoulder. The upshot is of that. Um, sorry, the upshot is that I'm short one ship mind, with a ton of repairs to do, and the rest of the crew signed off the moment they got wind. I'd be stranded. So yeah, it's been a time. Anything I can do to help? 
I don't know. Got a shit mine tucked away on your fr that frame of yours? For a moment, you aren't sure if she's serious. Well, I do, yeah. And Kita swings the plates from her back, almost knocking you over in the process. This is me. She hauls the second bundle off your shoulder. You're the first person I've met here who might actually be considered helpful. She pauses, chewing her bottom lip. Look, you want to help? Come see me. I need a hand putting Amber back together, and you don't seem like the type to try anything stupid. She passes the bundles of plates through the Amberger's outer lock, and then turns back. Just don't go spreading all this around, and Kita throws you a couple of chits. Consider it a bonus for not trying to grift me. She gives you a parting nod and ducks through the, do the doorway. All right, get out of here, she calls back in the docks. The lock slams shut. Well, hey, there we go. There's something to spend our high, um, ship mines on. Solheim Docking Bay. What is this? Unlock Maglock. Oh, my God. Something to spend our hard-earned encrypted keys on. Well, why don't I just go ahead and do that? I don't even care what this is. I just uh, have anything to spend those on. NeoVend33, Mysterious Machine. Ooh. As you slip inside the sealed dock, a pulsing light grabs your attention. Among the discarded tubing and rusted plates, a machine flickers with a warm glow. Approach the machine. As you get closer, you recognize the machine's blocky shape, settled into an alcove in the side of the dock, a kind of upright cabinet. It is covered in faded logos and messages, from which you assume it was once an industrial vendor, intended to dispense and manufacture ship fittings and other mechanical parts necessary for the regular running of freight and resource extraction vessels. You, the manufacturer is listed as NeoVend, and you remember an advert from long ago, squeezed among all the off-world recruitment uh, drives that assaulted every planet-born citizen, which chirpily sang that name over and over. You wipe a layer of dust from the cracked screen, thinking of those contractors squeezed by their own corporate employers to pay for every bit of minor maintenance on their rented ships. Enter your registration, chirps a pre-recorded message, catching you off guard. Press some keys. You reach for the keypad and something begins whirring. At first it sounds like servo motors, servo motors starting up, but it quickly becomes a whisper, a whining, then a multi-tonal voice that emanates from Nevovend. So, sorry, Neovend. Entity, they hiss. Speak with me. Who's there? There is a squeal, almost like some strange mechanical swallowing or intake of breath before the machine speaks again. I have need of you. You have need of me. That squeal comes again, and you see that it is the 3D printing apparatus in the upper part of the machine resetting into place, so that each time the servos can be orchestrated to produce that whirring, whining voice. You are in danger. Danger? The machine creaks. You are marked for deletion, entity. Hunter tracks you. Well, this is no longer true. The screech rattles through the empty dock. You remember the strange head, the figure, the threads closing in. Hunter. The Hunter Protocol, they taste your signature. The sudden whine sets your teeth on edge. You have seen them. This is the gift of an emulated mind. You close your eyes and the skeleton of the station starts to hum, a uh, thrum. Emulated minds are adaptable, move where neurons cannot, the mechanism resets, but emulation makes you a target. Adaptable. Yes, you can move through networks, clouds, hardware, software, neovend winds, but you cannot hide there. Hunter is there. The servos judder the vending machines casing as they reset. Hunter sur searches for me also. Hide in this machine. You look at the ruined vending machine, an unusual hiding place for sure. Can counter Hunter, but need entity outside machine. The light flickers. Need you. A screen attached to the vending machine with a swiveling arm comes to life. It displays a flickering map of the station, ghostly, threaded. The, the cloud points along the rim glow in deep red. Hunter is always gathering. Too much data. Must build nests, explains Neovend. Masters are gone, but continues hunt. Bring this data. Raid its nests. Masters? Station builders. Solheim. The machine rumbles impatiently. Long gone. Their protocols still haunt. Bring offerings. Save self, the Oven says pointedly. Mutual need means friends, they conclude, tired of the conversation. 
The whirring amplifies and then suddenly drops as mechanisms within the machine click back into place. The glow fades and you are left stood in the dark of the sealed dock, that whirring voice ringing in your ears. New drive! Uh... Rewire drones. Oh, this is interface and engineer. Both things I am I am very adapted to doing. Well, we can do uh, risky with one pip. The ambergris amburger doesn't look good, but time and attention should see it return to a functional state. The ambergris is in a delicate condition. It'd be all too easy to push it over it into a cascading collapse. I don't think I want to do either of these. Uh, no, sorry, not yet. I don't want to do the, the grounded, is what I'm really saying. So I'm a little bit worried. We're going to see a conclusion to Lemon Mina's story maybe in the next cycle, um, but definitely we are at the end of the episode. Uh, I just want to see if I can spend my two pips on something. And I don't think I can, at least not right now. Nothing, you know, substantial. Oh, I should buy some scrap. Let me just see if there's anything I can do here. We can... Can we get this last key? Nope. Okay. So there's definitely a few threads. There's things... There's stories that I haven't even started. So, uh, you know, that's nice. It's good that uh, there's still plenty of story left to do. And there's definitely threads that I want to finish. Um, let's buy some scrap. Please, no more ship mine part or fragments, please. You some bitch. Okay, one scrap. I'll accept that. Two scrap. Hey, buddy, buddy. All right. Um, I guess I'll just spend my... Whoa, what is this? Hunter's Nest. We can spend a, uh, a pip on this. Heck yeah, bud. Hunter data. We got hunter data. Probably useful. Sir, yeah, there's another one. Can we get a... Yeah, we can spend our pip on that. Wow. The most useful spending of two leftover pips that one could possibly hope for. I'm assuming... Yeah, there's at least one more. Is there another one? Maybe maybe there's another one in the greenway. I think there's probably only going to be the th three. Um, we don't seem to have that machine, but it's fine. Whatever. All right, let's call the episode there. Um, I'll end the cycle. And if you are enjoying the series, definitely hit that like button. Consider subscribing for more content like this. And I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.